My name is Tim Horn. I'm the Acting Administrator for the General Services Administration, and I have the distinct pleasure to welcome Dan Matthews to the GSA family today. Um, before we get started, I want to acknowledge, speaking of family, I want to acknowledge Dan's family, um, his wife Laura, his daughters Alex and Katie, um, his father Don, who's a retired Navy captain, um, so we're, Dan's continuing his father's uh, tradition of service, and um, Dan's mother, Audrey. Dan um, apparently told Audrey she has to be on her best behavior today, but Audrey and I have a deal that she should be on her worst behavior today or not on her best behavior. So but I, I, I at least outrank him, so I know he's your son, but... Um, so um, uh, the, other, the other thing, you know, anytime we're in the... Uh, in the historic administrator's suite, I think it's, I think it's appropriate to recognize the, the, at least the commissioners that I've worked with in my 25-year career, which, which stretches a long time. So I, I want to acknowledge Bob Peck, Joe Moravec, David Winstead, who I was delighted to see is in the room today. Welcome, David. Uh, Bob Peck again. Uh, Dorothy Robine and Norm Dong. The, the, they were, you know, they were all, I, I'm a, I've spent most of my career in PBS and they all had a really positive influence on me. So I, I want to I acknowledge the history of, of GSA and PBS and I also want to uh, thank them for all that they've done for the organization. Um, so, so Dan comes to us with 22 years of public service in the U.S. House of Representatives, including spending the last 14 as the Republican Staff Director for the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Subcommittee on Economic Development, Public Buildings and Emergency Management, which has direct oversight of GSA, which means he knows GSA. Um, I've had the um, privilege of uh, being before Congress a couple times, and Dan was very helpful both times um, as I prepared for that, and and um, is very insightful. You know, he I got to spend a little time with him in the office yesterday. He gets our business. He understands what we're about, and and. Speaking of, of that, you know, as we're talking about selecting a commissioner and, and as I think of what, what, the, what the perfect commissioner would be, um, it, it's really the following. First of all, it's someone who's going to take care of the 6,000, almost 6,000 employees in the public building service. These are the people that are on the front lines making sure that the buildings are operating properly, that they're clean, that our lease deals are done right, that our contracts are done right. Um, you know, it's, it's the commissioner's job to make sure that, that all of those folks have a great place to work and that they have the tools that they need to do their job and that they have support from senior leadership. Um, it, it's also, uh, so that's, that's kind of a third of the job. The second third of the job is to, is to take care of our portfolio. Uh, almost 370 million square feet in 8,600 buildings. Um, you know, really, uh, Real estate and, and workplace is something that facilitates the work of the rest of the federal government. So uh, that's the second third. And then the final third is taking care of our customers. There's, there's millions of customers that have different perspectives on GSA and, and really are, what, what we do day to day allows them to do their work on behalf of the American people. So that was really the, that's the selection criteria and I'm, I, I can guarantee you that Dan brings every single one of those things to the table. For, um, you know, we, we, we couldn't have all 6,000 employees in the room today, but for those of you that are going to see this in the regions and, and um, you know, out that weren't able to be here today, we're, we're really lucky to have Dan. Um, he's going to do a fantastic job, and he's going he's gonna to honor tr the tradition of the, uh, of the commissioners that have gone before him. Um, just one final word about Dan. He graduated from Georgetown University with a degree in government and philosophy. Um, too bad that you don't have psychology in there. You might need that a little bit too. Um, and so uh, it is now my privilege to do the formal swearing in for Mr. Dan Matthews. So Laura and Dan, if you could... I, Daniel Matthews. I, Daniel Matthews, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend, the Constitution, the Constitution, of the United States, of the United States, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, 
that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same. That I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation for purpose of evasion, for purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge, that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office on which, on which I am about to enter. I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Our new commissioner, Mr. Dan Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Tim, for that uh, kind introduction. I really appreciate it. You know, I, I've worked for politicians for a long time. In all those years, I've never recalled anyone saying they wished for a longer speech, so I will keep that in mind and, and keep this brief and to the point. But seriously, thank you so much for joining us today. It is truly a, an honor and a privilege for me to be here. I'm humbled by the opportunity to join this talented team at GSA and to serve as commissioner of the Public Building Service. But first, let me recognize my wife, Laura, my daughters, Alex and Katie, and my parents, Don and Audrey, for being here. They're truly my, my better half, and I hope you have an opportunity this morning to get to know them a little bit. I also want to recognize Michael Gelber for his leadership this past year as, uh, when he served as the acting commissioner of the Public Building Service. I've known Michael for a number of years, and I look forward to looking, working with him and getting to, to know and, and benefit from his vast knowledge and experience. And uh, thank you for taking that hearing yesterday, too. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, standing at this podium, I'm reminded of the saying, uh, one's point of view often depends on where you sit. For 22 years, I sat at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue on Capitol Hill with direct oversight of GSA. Now, I've been here for about an hour this morning, and it's truly amazing just how different the view appears already. <laughs> yeah, in all seriousness, I'm under no illusion that two decades of working with Congress has taught me everything I need to know to be successful in this job or to help GSA to succeed. For that, I'm really counting on you, the career professionals at GSA, to educate me, to counsel me, and guide me. So what can you expect? My goal is really quite simple. Meet the federal real estate needs at the best possible price for the taxpayer. Whether we're shrinking our footprint, disposing of underutilized property, or acquiring new facilities, Congress has given us powerful tools to accomplish our mission. We need to work with our partners in government to ensure we have full access to those tools and that we use them appropriately to protect the interests of the taxpayer. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the good work and significant savings PBS has already achieved. By my former committee's calculation, you saved taxpayers over $3 billion on prospectus level projects in the last few years alone. That's a tremendous accomplishment. And I know there's a bipartisan consensus in Congress to continue those efforts and even to expand them into the future. Internally, you can expect me to listen and to learn. While my teenage daughters might not fully agree with this, I really think I have an open mind. <laughs> and I look forward to getting new ideas, opportunities, and recommendations from all of you. And this extends to our government partners in the real estate industry, too. I want to understand what we do well and where we can improve from their perspective. GSA has a strong cadre of career professionals who are well respected both inside government and outside of government. While I believe there's always room for improvement, if there are changes, they'll come after thoughtful consideration and they'll be directed towards our primary goal of saving taxpayer dollars. I really think this is an exciting time to be a GSA. Over half our lease space is expiring in the next few years. The modern office environment is transforming. Most markets where GSA has a major presence is still a buyer's market. We have powerful real estate tools at our disposal, the best brokers, and bipartisan alignment in Congress and the administration to save money through real estate. These factors combined create a tremendous opportunity for meeting our mission and saving taxpayer dollars. 
I'm really excited to be here. I hope you share my enthusiasm, and I look forward to working with you to realize this opportunity together. Thank you, and thank you again for being here this morning to share this occasion. Nice, nice work, Dan. Um, uh, thanks. We're again thrilled to have you here. I did forget to thank Michael Galbert in my remarks, so uh, but I did start the clapping, so we're even. <laughs> <laughs>